Hello, I'm Tiji and this is Timberborn Update 4. Today, I'm gonna go over the most important things I have added in this update, as well as how it all works. Starting off with one of the biggest changes in this update, which was made to the food production for the Iron Thief faction. Now, instead of having like carrots and potatoes and whatnot, now we have stuff like kohlrabi, which takes 3 days to grow and doesn't need any sort of processing, just like carrots used to. Cassava, that takes 5 days to grow and needs to be fermented in a fermenter, which I'll talk about a little later. Soybeans take 8 days to grow and also need to be fermented. Corn takes a whopping 10 days to grow and has to be processed in a food factory. And eggplants take 12 days to grow and are processed in a food factory as well. We can now also grow some new foods in the brand new hydroponic garden. Like mushrooms that take 192 hours to grow, also known as 8 days. As well as algae which takes 288 hours or 12 days to grow. And to make them edible, you can ferment the mushrooms and process the algae in a food factory. You can now also grow mangrove trees, which you plant underwater, and after 10 days, you can harvest it for 2 logs. Or if you wait 10 more days, you'll be able to harvest the berries that grow on it, which can be done using a gatherer. Coffee bushes are a thing now as well, and of course, they're used to make coffee in a coffee brewery. And the last and final new crop that was added to the Iron Teeth is canola oil and the oil press. The canola takes 9 days to grow and the oil can be used for processing eggplants and algae in the food factory. So now that we know what all of the new crops are, let's go over how all of the new buildings work to process that food. Starting off with the fermenter, it requires 50 horsepower, which is the perfect amount for a single power wheel. In it you can ferment all of your cassavas, soybeans or mushrooms so that they're edible. Then we have the food factory, which requires a whopping 120 horsepower power. It allows you to turn all of your corn, eggplants or algae into rations, which you have to do before they become edible foods. And it also uses logs for fuel. You also have the oil press and coffee brewery, which I mostly went over already. But the amount of power they use is 50 horsepower and 200 horsepower respectively. Now I'm not fully sure what coffee does, but what I do know is that it increases the well-being of your beavers. In this update, a lot of things have been made folklore exclusive, which is why the Iron Thief had so many things completely changed, but the biggest complete change is with the monuments, where some monuments became folklore exclusive and others became Iron Thief exclusive, with some new ones that were added to fill in the gaps. So for folk tales, you have the Farmer Monument. It takes a thousand signs on lock, costs 200 logs, and has a 7 tile radius. The Brazier of Bonding takes 3000 signs on lock, costs 400 plants, to build and has a 10 tile radius. And the Fountain of Joy, which costs a ludicrous 12,000 signs on lock, costs 400 planks and 100 treated planks. And wait, 300 metal blocks as well? Sheesh. That's one expensive monument. Luckily, it has a 20 tile radius, so it'll reach a lot of beavers very easily. Anyways, moving over to Iron Teeth, we have the Labor Monument, which has the same exact cost as the Farm Monument, and even has the same radius as well. Then we have the Flame of Unity, which takes the same 3,000 science to unlock, but requires 300 planks and 50 metal blocks to build, and it packs in at a 10 tile radius. And finally, we have the Tribute to Ingenuity, which takes 12,000 science points to unlock and requires a massive 400 gears, 100 treated planks and 300 metal blocks. Damn, that is one expensive statue. But it also has a radius of 20 tiles, so it'll reach quite a lot of beavers. We also got some other building changes, starting off with the folktale exclusives. We have the hedge, which completely replaces the lock fence. RIP lock fence, you will be missed very heavily. The efficient farmhouse. This bad boy can fit entire three beavers in it. And the lumber mill is another building that you won't see in the Iron Teeth faction anymore. So what you will see instead that is the industrial lumber mill, which can fit two beavers in it, as well as the farmhouse, which is smaller than the folk hill version, and it can only fit two beavers inside of it. So before we get into the district changes, I want to remind you that I'm live on Twitch this Wednesday, Friday, and Sunday. So if you want to have a chat and help me get part of before Twitch gone, then you can check it out by clicking the top link in the description. Anyways, let's go over the district changes, as they have been completely revamped. Starting off with the 
district, range realm has been removed, allowing your beavers to build something that's impossibly far away from the district center. Though you do get a warning on your building if it's more than 70 tiles away from your district center, advising you to make another district for optimal performance. Though from my experience, if it's something like a lumberjack or metal scavenger, it should be relatively fine. Distribution also got a complete rework, so no longer will you have to tweak your little numbers to have the correct amount of items go to a district. Now you just build this brand new district crossing, which separates your districts and takes care of your imports and exports from them. Just make sure that you have beavers working there though, or otherwise you might have a little bit of a problem. You now also have a distribution tab at the end here, which might look complicated at first, but it's actually pretty simple. You just have three things you can toggle between. So for the items you always want to have, you can set it to always import, which will import the items into that district even if they don't really need it. Import if needed does exactly what it sounds like it does, which it just imports items only if they're needed, or as long as there is a matching storage for that item. And last but not least, you have the do not import button, which just doesn't import the item no matter what. And apparently you got a brand new map. Well, indeed we did. It's a 192 by 192 tile map called Craters, which features one giant crater and two smaller ones filled with water. You start off in the big crater next to the little river where you can get your water from. It has plenty of room for activity as well and has a good place for a dam, allowing you to store a lot of water during droughts early on. It's definitely a pretty cool map, but definitely on the easier side. So if you're not looking for a big challenge, but a different experience, then I can definitely recommend playing on it. They also optimized this game heavily. Like I went from having 30 to 40 FPS on the save to having it be locked at 70 FPS with some dips into 60. Like that's freaking crazy. Now there are still a whole bunch of tweaks, small changes and bug fixes here and there that didn't make it into the video as I wanted to showcase the most important changes. So if you want to know absolutely everything that was changed in this update, then there is a link to the patch notes in the description. I also think you'd enjoy the start of my first full series here, where I try to expand my beaver colony on one of the hardest maps on hard mode. But anyways, thank you for watching and have a nice day.